I have so much inventory to get put away and this is hands down my least favorite reselling task. So I figured I would film today while I put my inventory away and answer some questions you guys have asked. But before we hop in, I do wanna show you guys where I store my inventory. So I do keep things pretty small, pretty tight and lean around here. So I only have up to about 200 items listed at a time. So everything I am flipping fits in this closet. So I will show you guys first before we hop in what it looks like in there. I try to keep it as organized as possible. Right now it looks pretty good. I keep most things in buckets and then I hang the bulkier stuff. This rack I use when I photograph all my items, I hang them all up. I store shoes up top, my shipping supplies, and then pretty much what ends up happening is sometimes I accumulate a couple bags, Ikea bags, Goodwill bags, of items that still need to get put away, that I've already photographed, that just need to get put away until they sell. So if I can just get, if I can just get this one bag put away, I will feel good. I have four bags in total that need to get put away but one at a time, one at a time. Okay, the first question is, how do you pronounce your name? So my name is pronounced Ilana. All growing up, it was mispronounced a lot, so it's kind of a touchy subject, but it is pronounced Ilana. A lot of my close friends and family call me Lana, so that is definitely an option, but yeah, it is pronounced Ilana. Okay, the next question is, what area do you source in? And I really hope these clear poly mailers aren't obnoxiously loud. The microphone might be picking them up, so I'm sorry if it's super annoying to you. But yeah, so the next question is, what area do you source in? And I source in the Portland, Oregon area. That is where I live. And lucky for me, there are three to four bins locations within a 30 minute drive. So I've tried three of those locations and still need to go to one more, which is up in Vancouver, Washington, which is about a 30 minute drive, maybe a little less than that, 25 minutes or so, but I am pretty lucky. I have some great sourcing options here in Portland. Before I moved home to Portland, I did live in um, upstate New York. It's about an hour north of the city. So not technically upstate to people who live in upstate New York, but more upstate than New York City. And when I lived there, I did have to drive about 45 minutes to an hour to source good inventory. So I do feel lucky now that I have much better options here pretty readily available. It's hard to say which area has better items to find, but it is nice to have more locations closer by here. All right, the next question is, how do you determine which items to sell on Poshmark versus eBay? So I list every single thing onto Poshmark first, and then I cross list most things over to eBay. It's definitely not, eBay does not have every single item that I have on Poshmark, but Pretty much at this point in time, I do cross-list everything. So the things that aren't cross-listed are just things that I didn't originally cross-list when I listed them. So most things get cross-listed over to eBay, but every single thing I find to sell, I do list on Poshmark. Okay, the next question is, how long did it take for your business to take off and become your full-time job? So spoiler to anybody who doesn't know, this is not my full-time job. I have a full-time job and I resell part-time for extra money, for a hobby, for the thrill of the hunt, and that is that. I did, for anybody who's been around a while here on YouTube, I four-time pursued reselling full-time. Now it was never my um, income enough to fully support me, so I have never been at a point where Flipping Clothes Online has fully, fully supported myself, my dog, my student loans, all of that. So I have never full-time in that sense made a full-time living and I don't plan on it. But for a time when I really needed to pivot in the job I was doing, I leaned heavily on reselling and pursued it heavily along with YouTube. And so it's something I have pursued full-time in the past. It's not something that has ever supported me fully and it's something that I feel a lot more at ease with and enjoy a lot more with it being part-time. So I don't see that changing, but I do like that you can kind of adjust how much time you put into it and depending on the season of your life, you can really, you know, put more effort into it or pull it back a little bit depending. So I have really liked having it as a part of my income, but at this point in time it is part-time and I do not say that 
changing. Okay, the next question is compare your full-time experience as a reseller versus being part-time. So my full-time experience, it, um, you know, I obviously spent most of my day, a big chunk of my day reselling. So thrifting items, um, photographing them, listing them, shipping them, cleaning them, all of those tasks. And now I, of course, work a full-time job. I work just about 40 hours a week and I like the stability of it. I like knowing I'm gonna get a paycheck, knowing I have health insurance and weekends off. And I just really do enjoy the stability of it. And then having this as an additional thing, it just takes the pressure off a lot. And I really think that reselling full-time while I was, yes, spending full-time hours doing it, it well, I wasn't necessarily making a ton more in sales and in profit overall just because I, I don't know. It's like I just knew what tasks I had to get done and I would stretch them throughout the day. And now I have a little bit more finite time to get things done. So I just, I'm a little more efficient, I think, as I am standing here talking, barely getting done what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm a little more efficient and things just seem to be a little bit more streamlined. I'm almost in a similar place as far as how much I'm bringing in from reselling now that I'm part-time as I was when I was full-time because the tasks are still the same. I'm just condensing them into smaller chunks of time, if that makes sense. But yes, overall, it's less stressful, more fun. Um, I don't rely on it as heavily. I obviously spend less time doing it, but the outcome is not far off from what it used to be. The next question is, how often do you work on reselling weekly? So I think weekly, I would say average is probably around 15 hours. Sometimes it's about 30 minutes per day. If I'm just listing a couple things, it can be up to four or five hours a day if it's a day that I'm thrifting or listing and um, photographing a bunch of items. So it just really depends on the day and on the week, but I think average is about 15 hours. That does not include YouTube. That's just the amount of time spent on reselling tasks. So thrifting, shipping, photographing, listing, cleaning the items, measuring the items. I would guess right around 15 hours. All right, the next question is, have you ever tried to get someone into being a reseller? And I don't believe I ever have. I honestly can't think of anybody that I've tried to get into being a reseller, but my friends do come to me for questions with Poshmark or shipping items. And they're just trying to sell the items from their own closet. So in that way, I've kind of helped um, people with selling items, but not necessarily reselling, like finding items to flip online. And I don't know that I ever would. I think it's something that you either want to do it or you don't. And if you want to do it, awesome. We have that in common. But if not, I'm not really here to try to convince anybody. So that's kind of my take on that. All right, the next question is, do you have the same boyfriend as New York or a new one? So a little bit of a personal question here. But if you've been following my channel a little while, you may remember my now ex-boyfriend while I was living in New York and we did break up before I moved back to Portland. So the man I'm dating now, who I mentioned on my last video, is a new one, if that's how you wanna put it. <laughs> All right, the next question, what is life like in Portland? Is it sky high rents and lots of rain slash homeless people everywhere like the news portrays it to be? Life here is great. I think it did take moving away and being away from it for a while and then eventually coming back for me to really appreciate it and I think Oregon in general is a very beautiful state. It's got the mountains, it's got the beaches, it's got forests like within the city. So it's a very beautiful and cool place to be. It does rain a ton. So if you don't like the rain, it's probably not the place for you, but I find the rain very comforting and you do just kind of get used to it. I don't know what else to say about the rain, but sky high rents. Yeah, rent's pretty high, but I feel like rent is pretty high a lot of places in the US and definitely in you know major cities and bigger cities, it's typically higher. So I can say the rent is pretty high. As far as the people who are homeless, yes, there are quite a few people who are homeless in the downtown Portland area and in certain parts of Portland throughout the city. And I think that is something that the city has for as long as I can remember had a, had a problem with a little bit. And it's a definitely bigger issue than I know how to solve. But yeah, it's not, you know, constantly in your face, absolutely everywhere you go. But there are parts of Portland where there are more people who are homeless, more tents, 
and things like that. So I'm not going to pretend that that's not a thing here. It definitely is, but it's not, you know, constantly in your face. I do think especially post COVID Portland has had some issues and, you know, a lot of businesses shut down like in a lot of places and, you know, everything like that. So I think there is a kind of period right now where it's slowly coming back and it's a very vibrant place, cool place to be, very cool people. And if you like beer and or coffee and the outdoors and you don't mind the rain, come visit. So the next question is how old are you? And I turned 30 last month in August. So I am a new 30 year old and I gotta say I'm happy to be here. Happy to be um, out of my 20s. 20s were great, but it's also a pretty tumultuous time and I feel like I'm already really enjoying my 30s. So no complaints here. I am maybe seeing a couple more gray hairs than I did before, if I'm being completely honest, but overall feeling good about being 30. And then the last question is, what sizes do you find sell easier? I'm focused on women's clothing primarily. So that's a great question. I don't know that I've ever been asked that before, but I don't think there's one across the board size that always sells better or easier. Um, I think maybe generally speaking, large and extra large can sell quicker than extra smalls and smalls, but I think it also comes down to how many of that exact item in that exact size are already listed. So if I found this sweater in a size, what size is this? Free people sweater size medium. So if I looked on Poshmark and saw that there were only two mediums listed, but there were 20 smalls listed, if I had found a small, I would be the 21st listing and my item would have a lot less, you know, lower chance of selling versus being only one of a couple size mediums that would definitely sell quicker. So that's definitely a factor is just checking how many of that exact size in that exact item are already listed, how saturated it is. And then also if the item is still being sold on the retailer's website, so if it's still a very new item that's still being sold online, if you have a size that you found that is sold out on the website like they're still selling that exact item but they're not selling or they're out of extra larges and you have an extra large that is probably going to sell very quickly because not only is it still being sold on the website so it's a very new current style but the retailer doesn't even have the size anymore that you have available to list so in that case your item would probably sell very quickly so i don't think it's you know always going to be the exact same across the board which size sells easier i do think it kind of depends on a couple things but typically generally speaking let me know if you agree or disagree on this but i personally have found that larges and extra larges can move a little quicker than especially extra smalls or extra extra smalls don't even get me started on those that there's a good chance those will sit for a long time that's it for this video thank you guys for watching and thank you to those of you who asked a question i definitely enjoyed doing this video and i haven't done one of these in i think like a couple years so it's fun to do a q a and i'm sure i'll do another one at some point in the future but thank you for watching i hope you have a very good rest of your day and i will see you guys in my next video bye